What's up gearheads, it's Trev, and today at the garage, it's time for a little bit of a brake upgrade. So more of just a rotor upgrade, uh, I got some Hawk Performance front and back rotors. I'm getting a pulsation out of the front, the back ones are really old, and the pads on the back ones are pretty much done. Not so much of an upgrade for the pads, uh, I just got the regular semi-metallics. A lot of people run ceramics because they make less dust and less noise, but semi-metallics actually stop you better. I've already got braided brake lines, um, calipers have all been replaced a few years back, we're just going to touch up the paint on them. I'm going to start with just cleaning the heck out of all four calipers. Uh, this way they'll be ready to accept a little bit of paint, then we'll take everything apart and uh, change it up. This might even work better if I take them off first. <laughs> okay, I changed my game plan up a little bit. Rather than try and just hose everything off and brake clean, wire brush, because these things are pretty bad. I thought this was all like rust back here and that I had never painted it. No, there's paint underneath there. So, <laughs> scraping everything clean with the wire brush, that gets all the heavy deposits off, and it also scuffs up the paint that's on there so the new paint will adhere. So now that I've got it all scuffed up, and I've got my hardware cleaned, now I'm going to brake clean it. Then it should be ready for paint. I even went ahead and got the inside. Might as well clean it all up, right? We'll see how that chassis saver holds up the brake clean. I think it'll be fine. All right, we'll let that dry. Three more to go. Maybe I didn't need back brakes. They're making quite a bit of noise, but I got plenty of pad. How about that? You know what I think it was? Building up a little bit of a rust ridge on the edge of the rotor. And that's what was making the noise. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do all new anyway since I'm already kind of committed here. These pads you can see getting a little pitted. Everything sat for so long. I forgot I got to disconnect the e-brake on this to get this thing loose. So if you're doing back brakes on an old Honda or Acura, to disconnect your e-brake, you got to pull this little pin right here. And then this pin comes out. Then your e-brake cable is loose because the parking brake uses the brake caliper which you need the special tool because it's a spin-in piston. The other thing that's handy to have for any Honda, since they use these rotor screws and they tend to rust in, get an impact driver. You will definitely thank me later. That is not supposed to look like that. Oh, this thing's gonna be rusted in. Ah! Maybe I should have gotten the caliper paint that you use a brush so I didn't have to take this apart so far. Because this is gonna fight me. In the meantime, Definitely needed this. One of these makes a huge difference in your life. Worth every penny. Hardly ever use it, but worth every penny. So here's the other thing I forgot, if you guys can see it. Right at the e-brake cable, there's a bolt here and another one right here. Those two bolts are for the bracket for the e-brake. So actually I could probably take those out first and get better access to this thing here. All right, so here's where we're at. Did not need brakes on this side, like I said. If this is all scuffed up, I cannot get this pin out. Now on the other side, on the driver's side, 
I most definitely did need brakes. Now, I can't get the pin out on this side either. But I also can't get to this other bolt because of the way this is around. I think the parking brake is stuck on on this caliper. So I'm running into a little bit of trouble here. Because I need to get these apart. I also need to see if this will turn in. That should probably be my next step right now. Well, while I'm screwing around with the back, I'm going to go ahead and get the painting on the front. No use wasting time. You want to be as efficient as possible. Not looking for perfect, just better. I'm going to throw a little bit of tape around this and this. Then I'm just going to spray it. I'm out of freaking masking tape. Screw it. And the wind's coming towards the keeper. So a couple of problems I've run into over here. Pretty sure the parking brake is seized. Uh, forgot what my other problems were. So a couple of problems I've run into on this side here. Pretty sure the parking brake is seized, which is making it hard to get things apart. Can't get the pins out on either side. And on that side, these things were fairly well stuck. And on this side, the rubber boots have disintegrated off both of them. And they just pull right out, but there's no lubrication. So my back brakes are definitely hurting. The other problem is my special tool. It's too big. I'm gonna have to grab these with vice grips and spin them in. That's gonna be a pain, especially on this one that I can't get freaking loose. I got as much out of the way as I could. Caliper bracket, rotor. I can get a wrench in here on that last bolt I need to disconnect the caliper, but I can't turn it. I don't have enough room. So far, my one piece of good news is the caliper piston is spinning in. So here's what I'm thinking. That caliper is going to need to get replaced anyway. I'm going to put it together for now. I know, I know. But you know what? That side lasted for tens of thousands of miles as it was like that. And if I remember correctly, I, I remember that giving me a hard time years ago when I did the calipers. So maybe I just did the front calipers. Ice cream! If that ice cream truck doesn't say creeper, I don't know what does. Dude, for real, look at that thing. That was rattle canned in somebody's backyard. You think he's selling ice cream? <laughs> anyway, I would like to get this together to drive it. Paint's drying up okay on the front. I'm going to spray the backs and cover up as much as I can, the best I can. I'm going to get the brakes together for now. I got to order some parts anyway. Stuff's got to come apart again anyway. I need bushings for the suspension here. I need fog light bulbs for that, which you can't get in the regular store. And, doesn't it figure, I broke an engine mount in the Camaro. So, energy suspension's gonna love me. Let's get the back calipers painted, get all the new brake components put on so at least this thing will be drivable. Not the most professional job in the world, but it'll do. And this, by the way, is how you tell you got something quality over something from eBay. It's making me kind of sad I didn't spend the extra money to get some good Hawks pads instead of these, but for those people who think they look cool when they reverse the direction that these slots and hole, uh, holes face, Hawks went ahead and labeled what side each one of these things goes on. Alright guys, tip of the week. A lot of people don't realize there is a certain way these are supposed to face. The pad with the squealer tab on it goes on the inside. And the other thing is you want the squealer tab at the leading edge of the pad and the rotor. So because my caliper is on the front, I want this pad on the inside facing this way. This is still a little bit tacky. 
And you would think I would have learned my lesson from the Jeep, but oh well, on it goes. Oh crap. Oh, look at that one. I dropped it, I hit the caliper. That sucks. These back brakes are kind of a pain. But here's the good thing about hoarding stuff. I said that the uh, rubber pieces for these are disintegrated. I think these are off a of Toyota. And they don't fit perfect. But they will get the job done, at least for now. Ah, oh, this parking brake cable sucks. You know, it sucks. As much as I love this car, the rear brakes on this thing are a terrible design. They're just too awkward, too stiff to handle. The way the parking brake is built in, it's just a poor design. But, now it's together. And hopefully whatever that noise is, is gonna stop after I apply the brakes. <laughs> okay guys, new back brakes, front brakes. Car's coming back together. So here's the brakes with the wheels on. Not too bad. And here's the car down on the ground with the new Yonaka coilovers. So somebody at Yonaka apparently has a sense of humor. Now don't get me wrong. I wasn't exactly expecting perfect ride height right out of the box. But I was expecting some sort of factory preset instead of lift off in the front and jumped in the back. I've got some adjusting to do. I'll talk to you guys later. By the way, after doing brakes, always remember to pump your brake pedal before you go anywhere.